Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. Today is another Sunday sew along and we're doing part three of the Style Arc Ziggy sew along. Okay, <laughs> this, this project is a beast and I'm gonna tell you, I kind of feel like this project is like having children a little bit. <laughs> A lot of pain, a lot of um, trauma associated with it, but then you move on and um, you just love the end product so much that eventually you only remember the good things and you'll do it again. I'm totally, it's not the pattern, it's the fabric that I chose. I chose very thick, um, too thick, almost too thick of leather. So, <laughs> it's just a very exciting um, moving through the machine. It is I, as I'm talking to you now, it is a finished coat, and I love it, and it is gonna get worn a ton. But getting there was a little, um, you're gonna see, a little treacherous. Okay, today I'm gonna be showing you how I quilted the um, yoke pieces and the upper parts of the sleeve. We're gonna cut out my, I'll show you how I cut out leather, which would work also for pleather um, as well, and then we're gonna put together the back part of the, um, the body. So that's very exciting. As always, um, give a thumbs up if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you would like to, um, I do have a virtual tip jar, a coffee account link that's down below that just allows you to, like a virtual tip jar, um, and all that money does go right back into the channel. Mostly these sew alongs and tutorials and helping um, pay for uh, supplies and equipment and all that kind of stuff that goes into the sew alongs and tutorials. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoy. Leave any questions you have down below, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, we are going to work on um, cutting out all of our pieces and doing the quilting on the uh, yoke piece and on the top part of the sleeve. I think that that's all we're going to be doing today. I think. <laughs> Um, and putting some interfacing in just a couple of places on these pieces. All right, so obviously I'm working with a leather hide. If you're working with regular fabric or even pleather, you can lay it out. I mean, pleather you would need to lay out single layer. Um, but, you know, like a wool or a denim or something like that, you can just lay it out per normal to cut out your pieces. I'm using leather, um, and this would apply to pleather as well. Obviously it needs to be cut out single fold. And... Um, um, I mean, not single fold. <laughs> it needs to be cut out flat on a single thickness is what I'm trying to say. Um, and there's no grain line. So you can fit, there's no grain on pleather or on rail leather. So you can wedge these pattern shapes any way you can get them. My favorite way to cut out leather and pleather, to be honest, is to use just a regular old ink pen. And, um, what I do is it just helps me play Tetris and you just need to remember that each piece gets a, you know, front. And then when I trace this one out again, I'm going to have to flip it. So you need to make sure that you're flipping your pattern pieces when you're tracing everything out. And as you can see, I've got quite a few different pieces. Hopefully the glare is not too bad from the lights <clears throat> traced on here. I've made little notches, um, little marks on with my pen where the notches are on these patterns. And I'm just going to leave these as pen notches. You could clip into it if you want to. I'm just trying not to dull my scissors too much, um, to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, I trace everything out on the leather, wedging things wherever I can get them. Now, let's see. The pieces that we are cutting out are... Um, anything that says main on it. So like this undersleeve, undersleeve cut one pair main. So this is the undersleeve for the main part of the jacket, obviously. Two of those get cut out. Follow the instructions on the pattern pieces. Um, it will tell you, obviously, the facing I've already cut out and that's already was attached last week. Um, some of these pieces you just have to cut out once, like the um, lower center back piece and also the facing that goes along with this. It just gets cut out once as well. Um, yeah, so I just am going to go through and lay all these out and move my fabric or, or my leather around. Now, I like to have my leather face up for um, the main reason. Leather has imperfections. Even if you've got a really high quality hide, and this one's a pretty high quality hide because this was used for, it was actually Broyhill. There's a Broyhill sticker on the back. So it was used for um, uh, fabric or for uh, furniture upholstery, which is how I got this when a furniture store went out of sale. Um, but I, there are some imperfections. So by 
having my leather face side up, I can see where those imperfections are and, um, you know, get my pieces around so I don't have like a blemish or, um, you know, there's a, a stamp for the leather quality on one little corner. You know, I don't want that on any of the pieces, that kind of stuff. So that's why I keep my leather face up. It's probably not as necessary for pleather because, I mean, pleather should be pretty uniform um, across the whole thing since it was manufactured. Um, so you could probably do this all on the back side if you wanted to. And then for cutting out, I just use my rotary cutter. And my blade is on its way out, so it's perfect. <laughs> because once I'm finished cutting this out, I'll have to replace the blade on this. So um, use either an old rotary blade or just know you're going to have to replace it when you're finished with the leather. Um, it's not, you know, that big of a deal. But yeah. Okay, so this, just going to cut all the pieces out this way. Except my two pieces that I'm going to be cutting... Um, that I'm going to be quilting. And what I'm doing with these is I am laying them down and roughly cutting around them and leaving a big gap. So for instance, with this one, I'll lay it here and I'll just keep the scraps from these pieces and I want to keep it nice and big just because I don't want it to shrink up um, once it's been stitched on. Now I'm not quilting my pieces to batting or anything, although you totally could if you wanted to, mostly because this is the yoke piece on the top of the shoulder and then obviously the top of the sleeve. And those are areas of my body I don't want to make bigger because of my body shape. I can look very top heavy easily. So I am not quilting mine to anything, but I am, um, I want the texture. So I am going to just be top stitching the pieces. Um, and I've already done this one little piece, but we'll talk about that more in a second. So, um, yeah, get all of your pieces cut out of whatever fabric you're using. And for the sleeve, top of the sleeve, you'll need two of these and obviously two of these yoke. Just cut roughly around them, but leave a nice big gap, especially if you're going to be quilting it to a batting or a layer of flannel or something like that. Okay, so I will meet you back here and we'll talk about um, the quilting of these two pieces next. And I want to go through the pieces with you real quick, and then I'm going to show you how um, I'm doing the quilted top stitching. Okay, so you're going to need um, two of your collar pieces. Now, it says on here, um, cut one pair main, which means one pair being mirror images of each other, but two of them, and a pair of fusible. So I am not putting fusible on mine. I'm such a rebel. But if you're using anything other than, I mean, I guess... If it's a heavy duty denim, I might omit the interfacing as well. I hardly, I mean, I use interfacing around zippers with denim and that's it. Um, like the heavier, like heavy, you know, like a 12 ounce denim, 10, well, about 12 ounce denim probably. Um, but yeah, I'm omitting it. Um, I kind of put them together and put it around my neck a little bit to see how I'd feel. And I think it's going to be fine. I I'm, think I'm only going to interface around the zippers for this, which is, I mean, that's five places, but that's all I'm going to do. Okay, so two collar pieces. If you're using something that needs fusible, two, you want to fuse both those pieces. Um, you need four, two pairs of main. So that means four total of the um, pocket facings. Also, um, you should have cut out your four pocket pieces as well out of your lining fabric or whatever you've decided to use for your pocketing. I did that last week. Um, one hem facing, this goes on the little back piece. You just need one of those. And if you're using a lighter weight fabric, you may want to interface this as well. Um, I would also suggest interfacing your hems of everything, the sleeves, the, um, jacket. So this hem facing, if you're, um, using something other than pleather leather or really heavy duty denim. Um, two of the bottom part of this, of the top sleeve. So you need one pair of this main. neat piles. <laughs> All right, this is the side back. You need a pair of these out of main. Again, interface those hems if um, you're using something a little less stable. And honestly, if I were using thinner leather, I would um, think about interfacing the hems and stuff as well. Um, two of the under sleeves. Two of the, this is the mid front. This is the piece I did my full bust adjustment on. 
two of the center backs. This is the upper center back. Two of the side fronts. Two mirror images. One of the lower center back, which is why you only need one facing piece because you just have this center one. And then two of the fronts and also two of the facings. I've already um, cut out my facings and they're already attached to my lining. You saw that last week. But um, I want to point out, so I'm going to put snaps on this piece as well. Um, and I am going to interface both sides of my seam allowances. Well, because a zipper goes in one side of one and the other side, my facings will get interfaced where the zipper is going to go. And is that right? No, it would just be through this facing. Holy moly. Okay. <laughs> On my left side, I will interface this side of the seam line. For my right side front, I will interface this one and I will interface the um, corresponding piece as well of where the zipper is going to go. So the side front, yeah, we'll go over that when I get to that point. I'm confusing myself. I've also though, because I want to put the snaps um, stud and stud, I've marked those and I actually just marked it right on my leather with an ink pen because I'm going to be putting a snap there. You'll never see it. <laughs> um, and then of course I've marked all of my little notches just with little tick marks where my notches need to go. Um, I've not interfaced anything right now, but definitely follow the interfacing rules um, if you're using something, you know, a little thinner. Okay, the final two pieces that I need two of are the top of the outer sleeve. Hopefully you can see this. I went ahead and washed off the, most of the um, chalk here. This is the plus of pleather and leather is that you can really get that chalk off easily with a little damp cloth. Wipes right off. Okay, so um, I've quilted, or I haven't really quilted, but I have done the quilting top stitch for two of these upper um, part of the sleeve, of the top sleeve. I'm going to show you how I, how I do this, but... Um, Yes, if you want, you can, and you're going to need two of the yoke. I'm going to show you how I do my quilting on this other, I have one more yoke piece to cut out. But um, if you are, if you do like a strong shoulder, if you do like a little bit, you know, visually to play up your shoulders, I think quilting this with like a piece of flannel underneath it or a light piece of batting would be lovely. It would give a, um, a little bit more texture and poof to the leather. Um, I just don't, that's not something I want to play up. So I'm just doing the top stitching on mine. However, when we're doing all of this, if you just put a layer of, again, flannel, cotton flannel, or a light batting um, underneath all of this, then yes, you can definitely um, actually quilt this. Uh, and the way I do this, you don't have to worry about shrinkage. I'm going to show you why, because a lot of times when you're quilting with another um, material underneath, it will shrink up a little bit because it gets poofy. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you how I'm going to, um, do that. Okay. So you need two of those already quilted and then two of these yoke edges and I've already quilted one. So what I did with both the upper, the top sleeve and the yoke here is I have roughly cut out a piece of leather in this case, um, around that, the piece that I'm going to be actually, we'll be cutting this out flipped, but roughly around that that piece okay because again it could shrink up and so I like to go ahead and quilt each piece and then cut it out then you make sure that nothing is getting you know shrunk or anything like that so I'm gonna show you how I um, yeah how I did the quilting okay so what you're gonna need is a ruler and a chalk pencil or this is a chalkener I think is what it's called but any kind of you know that'll lay down a line of chalk a thin line of chalk Actually, we're going to go this way. I'm actually going to flip this over, um, even though I won't cut it out this way, just because I want to be able to see my grain line. So I'm looking at my grain line here, and th the only reason I am looking at the grain line is that I want my, when I lay this piece out, I want it to be diamond shaped. You know, I want it all to look uh, like this. 
So that's, I want the diamonds on the straight of grain just for visual purposes, not because we have a grain line. So because of that, I want to see what, how my piece will fit on there. And then I'm just going to line up my little box here. So you've got, if you've got a see-through ruler, I've got these one inch boxes. You could do the two inch too, but I'm going from one corner of the box to the other corner of the box there. See a two inch corner. And then I'm just going to mark up here and down here. And I'm marking that arbitrarily. Okay. Now we're going to move that. So now we can turn this however you want, however is easiest. And we're going to start marking lines. And I'm just marking on either side of my two inch ruler because the least amount you have to run this over your chalk lines, the better it just, things are going to stay visible. So I go and do my two inch lines. And then I go back and line those line up, those lines up in the center of my ruler. So then you have one inch lines. So all of my lines here are one inch apart. And you can quilt this however you want. I mean, if you guys, I am not a quilter. But if you all are, um, you don't have to do boring quilting like this. You can do whatever kind of quilting um, that you want to do. And I know that there's feet and stuff where you don't, can you just draw out one line and then you can use that to, to do even, you know, lines from that point on. But this is, if you're not a quilter, this is how us layman people can do it. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew, follow the line, along each of these. And I'm going to sew it with a three millimeter stitch length. And um, I'm not back stitching at the front and back. So I've turned that function off. So I'm just sewing and I'm starting at one end, going to the bottom, starting at this end, going to the bottom, start at this, go to the bottom, start at this, go to the bottom. So I'm starting from the same and you could do it the other way, but starting from the same point at the top all the way throughout the piece. And then I'll meet you right back here. Okay. So I've stitched my lines one inches apart. Now we are just going to flip it and we are going to make lines. Again, you can do, this is very arbitrary. You're just making a fabric at this point. <laughs> so I'm making lines that are uh, perpendicular to the previous ones. I actually find it easier to do this going left to right as opposed to up and down. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing, making my two inch lines. And then, I don't know that I'll mess with that, but go back and do our one inch lines. So again, if you're wanting to use, if you're actually wanting to quilt this, um, just throw a piece of, you know, a similar size scrap in your, um, underneath your leather or pleather or whatever you're using, wool, denim, and quilt the two together. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Start at one end and so, so, so all these lines, and then I will meet you back here again. Okay, so now that my piece is all stitched, or quilted, whatever you're doing, now I need to um, trace out my piece. So I actually, this is my grain line right here, um, so I can see it on this back side, but I'm just matching up my grain line and I want it to run through those diamonds. And it really doesn't matter. I just want my, oh, that's not going to work. Sometimes you just got to play around with it. 
I should have cut a bigger piece. <laughs> There we go, that's gonna work. Okay. All right, that'll work. So now, and again, I have this flipped upside down because I've got to do the reverse of what I've already cut out. And now I'm just going to trace it. Now, you could also lay, you know, if you, quilt one and cut it out and then like I've done already um, you could lay it down and try and match the pattern um, if you've got a big enough piece I'm just looking for my notches here So what I mean by that is that you could, you know, I could have flipped this upside down and matched my um, fabric, basically, so that all my lines were continuing. I could have totally done that. Actually, yeah, that would have worked nicely, but I didn't. <laughs> you could do it either way. Okay, and now we're going to cut this out. And then as a final, again, if you're using pleather or um, leather, it's very easy with a wet cloth <laughs> to go through and clean off all of that chalk. Like so. Now, if you don't, have, if you're using fabric, um, this little guy actually, you would use this brush and you could just brush it along those stitching lines and that gets rid of your chalk too. So either or. And there you have it. There are my two pieces of the yoke. Okay guys, we are ready to start sewing. Um, I think this week, I'm having a hard time breaking up for whatever reason, breaking these videos up into um, sizable chunks like that makes sense. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and take you guys over to the sewing machine and let's just put our backs together. Um, and then we'll do the uh, fronts with the zippered pockets next week. So I will meet you over at the sewing machine. All right, let's just get this back sewn up. Um, all right, I've got my Teflon foot on. I have a leather needle in and I have my machine set at a three millimeter stitch length. Um, we are going to be using our yoke piece, our little facing, our side back, our center back, and then our little lower part, this little skirt piece here for the back of the center. All right, and we are basically starting, if you're following along with these detailed instructions. Okay, um... Well, it wants you to do the collar first, but we're not gonna do that because you're just setting it aside. Okay, so we're starting at step five. Yeah, we're starting at step five. I I really would like to follow along with the instructions a little bit more, but they skip around and there's hardly any detail in them. So this is step five is where we're starting. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna make our backs. Hopefully this all makes sense. Okay, so first we need our center back pieces. Okay, so that is this piece here. Um, I don't know, they don't really number their pieces, but okay, but it's just the center back. We've got two of these. And we're gonna be sewing our um, center back seams together, right sides together. Got little notches that you can use to match up. Our seam allowance is three eighths of an inch. Most of this is three eighths of an inch, with the exception of um, the around the neck edge. That is a quarter of an inch. Okay, I am not going to use really any pins or clips. 
Wonder Clips are great if you want to use them for, especially if you're using pleather or leather. Um, I'm not going to do either of those. <laughs> I just find that they get in the way. They kind of distort the fabric and yeah. Okay. So leather can be slippery though, because especially when you're sewing, you know, your right sides together, it's yeah, it either sticks with the suede side or the slick side can also be tricky, but all right, I'm just going to line up my raw edges and again, three millimeter stitch length with my leather needle. I have my back stitch function back on. So we're just gonna do this. Now I notice when I am sewing with leather that a lot of times like the, um, the piece that's, you know, like on the table or that's coming up around the edge of the table, depending on how long of a piece I'm working with, that can get stuck on things <laughs> like the suede side. So like the edge of the table that's like right here, um, that can get stuck and that, um, yeah, I just, just make sure you're like lifting and just go slow. I just, I do, I go slower when I'm working with leather. All right. At this stage, I would tell you to go and press your seam allowance open, but I am sewing with leather. I can't do that. So I am going to be top stitching all of my seam allowances open. So what I am doing, I would do this if I were doing pleather as well. I'm pushing those two open. You can go to your iron and kind of just like steam it a little bit um, just to make it a little bit more malleable. But um, yeah, we're just going to do this. So I am going to be sewing, I don't know, like... I'm like halfway into my presser foot here. And I'm just going to go with my hand underneath and make sure that that is staying open. So I am just top stitching. That's probably a quarter of an inch, which is about right because that will give me, I've got three eighths of an inch seam allowance under there. So that will catch everything. Also, really love the smell of leather. I love sewing with leather. It's just different and fun. Okay, so I've done one side and now I'm gonna go back and do the other. This does go through quite a bit of thread when you are top stitching all of the seams, but it does make everything lie so nice and flat. And I mean, it makes it look like a leather jacket that you would buy. Or, you know, I say leather. I only say leather because I'm using leather. Obviously, leather can be expensive. It can be hard to get your hands on. And I know a lot of people have um, ethical reasons why they don't want to use leather, so which is fine. But this would be the same for like a vegan leather or a pleather. Okay, look at that. Doesn't that just look lovely? So now we've got that top stitched open. I know a lot of people also use glue to get um, their leather to stay open. You know, maybe if I were using a really thick leather, but I don't think I need that on this one. So just the top stitching will do. Okay, next we're going to be using our center our lower center back piece. There's just one of these. And this gets stitched to the bottom here. Now, this has a little curve up here that's getting sewn to a straight edge. So I'm gonna put the curved piece on the bottom. So the little, the lower piece is gonna go um, on the bottom here and then the straighter piece on the top. I mean, leather really does mold pretty well. I'm just gonna start my seam just to get that all in place. <laughs> so I've got um, a little like, you know, tick mark here that goes right there at that center seam. So we're going to just work in batches here. So I'm just gonna start there. And then you're gonna get there. And we can start 
moving it around. Okay, and I'm gonna press this seam open as well. If you are sewing, go press that seam open. I mean, obviously we're all sewing. If you're using fabric, go press that seam allowance open or, oops. Finger press it open. And we're going to top stitch. Just sticking my hand under there to kind of smooth out. Um, another thing, especially when you're coming up on uh, intersecting seams like right here, it's going to be a bigger issue when we come to the other side of the seam. But um, a mallet, a rubber mallet just to kind of hammer that down and make it a little easier for your machine to take. In fact, we'll do that. Let me go get, let me get my mallet here. And you don't need to like kill it. <laughs> but if we just, oops, just turn that over. So really it's just that area and I've got a wooden mallet. But if you just wanna Just mush it down there. And we'll go back to our top to stitching. Just makes it go through your machine a little easier. Um, I would do that if I were using any heavy duty fabric, even, you know, like a denim. Just to make it a little more friendly for it to go through your machine and then just go slow over that spot. There we go. Oops. Make sure everything's staying open. That's wanting to be a stinker. All right. So there we've got that stitched down. And also from the other side. Okay, next we're gonna attach um, the instructions. Let's see, have you... Yeah, this is all still step five. <laughs> all of this is still step five. Um, when the instructions say to flat stitch something, that's an understitch. Just so, I think this is a um, Australian company? Australian? I think they're Australian. Okay. So we want this. We're just going to put this in the correct orientation. We're sewing our facing. When all is said and done, we obviously want this facing laying like this under there, correct? Yes, when all is said and done. So these are the seams that need to get attached. So we're gonna turn this like that, but you're gonna notice that, um, oh no, that is going, yes, okay, sorry. Sometimes we've got opposing curves, this one's fine. <laughs> All right, so we are just going to be matching notches. We've got um, a little tick mark right here that matches right here. So we're just going to be sewing these um, three-eighths of an inch. And actually, scoochie over. Ah. Uh, Let's try that again. <laughs> there we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, folks. I'm not, I don't sit right on top of my machine when I'm filming because I have to be back for the for there to be room for the camera. So, <laughs> you don't want to start on the edge, especially when you've got slipperier stuff like the, um, there we go. That should do it. Oh my gosh. Nope. Okay. Well, this is where glue would come in handy, huh? I'm going to start way inside. I'm just shredding this leather 
we're going to start way inside and I'll just back back into that section. There we go. Okay. <laughs> we'll back back into that in a second. So I'm going to match my notches. flip this over so I can back back into that area where it just didn't want to sew. Okay, so the next step wants you to flat stitch, which is the same as understitch, but if we just, because um, eventually this will get turned up underneath this, but if we were just to understitch it per normal, we've just got a lot of bulk there because of, you know, there's three, leather, three layers of leather. Excuse me, holy smokes I need to go eat lunch uh, three layers of leather so we are going to um grade our seam so that just to kind of reduce the bulk a little bit so I'm going to go get a crappier pair of scissors because I don't want to use my good ones um my LDHs are too nice and um we're gonna um grade the seam real quick okay so the way you want to think about it is the the part the part of the seam allowance that's going to be towards the public, which in this case, we're gonna be um, understitching it down to the facing, but then when everything gets turned up, it's actually this seam allowance that's gonna be against the public, you know, against the outside. That one you wanna leave longer. So we are going to cut the facing seam allowance to like half of its width. And you can also assess at this moment, um, I don't think the curve's severe enough that we need to do any clipping, but you know, that might be, these are really crappy scissors. <laughs> Such a hard thing with leather. I hate using crappy scissors because I know the better um, your tools, the better the results, but I don't wanna, I mean, leather's just really hard on scissors. I could go get them sharpened, I guess, but okay. <laughs> So, um, obviously I'm not doing any pressing, so I'm, but everyone should do this, oh, this step, gosh dang it, and unthread their machine. We're just going to push this over, make sure your seam allowance is towards the facing, and we're gonna top stitch this down. Oh, what the heck happened there? It's a lot of bulk. You could also use your um, mallet if you would like, that kind of And I'm sewing about, I don't know, 16th of the way from the seam line. And I'm kind of pulling that seam apart. Um, mostly because I, I can't use heat. So there we go. All right, so everything is knocking off all pattern pieces. really ripply, but when you go to um, hem this at the end, that facing is gonna make that curved part of the hem like so much nicer. And we will top stitch as well when all is said and done, but um, yeah. So it's just gonna be really, <laughs> it's good. it wants to do that right now, but that's okay. All right, so let's attach our um, uh -huh, side backs. Let's, there's that paper. So I will do one side with you guys and I'll do the other one off camera because you don't need to see me do both. 
All right, so I'm going to be attaching my side back, matching notches as I go. Um, and I missed, I missed labeled a notch, which is not helpful, but I noticed it as, okay, so that goes with that, the top one. Not super helpful. Okay. And I'm going to sew with my side back against the feet dogs. So now that we have this hem facing, um, because there's uh, the hem allow oh, God, be in frame, that would be helpful. There's the hem allowance that is on the other pieces. It just wasn't on this bottom piece because of the curve. So from here on out, we need the facing open because that's going to, um, that gets sewn to the edge, if that makes sense. And there's like a little notch for the um, side back there that gets matched up with that seam line which is just the hem so everything will get tucked nice and neat when all is said and done okay so going to go slow over this area. There's going to be a lot of layers of leather there. Then I've got a notch on the side back that matches the seam where this lower center back connects. And then it's just all about going from notch to notch. And again, I didn't clip into mine. I just... All right, so now we've got that all attached. So now we're gonna flip it over. And again, if you ever get to a seam where you feel like that's just too much curve, definitely clip into it. You know, do your notches and stuff. Cause leather is gonna get bulky, but that's also why we want everything nice and open, pressed open or sewn open. So now I'm just going to top stitch on either side of that seam. And I'm just going to you know, kind of go with my hand underneath here, um, making sure that that stays open. It's really thick right here, and we'll hit that with our mallet when we do the other side of the seam. For now, I just want that one side of the seam to stay out of the way. And the same down here where this facing attaches. So before, I go and do the other side. Just actually, I'm gonna flip it over. Just wanna give it some. It's really thick down there because of the seam allowance for the um, 
facing. There's like two layers that go down. It's very thick there. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. Oh, for heaven's sake, there we go. crossing seams. Especially down here. That's a lot of layers. Okay, so there's the side. Now we're going to attach our yoke piece. Um, obviously you'll do the same for the other side. I'm just showing you one side of the back here. <laughs> um, Okay, with this yoke piece, this tight curve is the neck. This one is the, the lesser, the looser one is the armhole. The longer straight side is the back and the shorter straight side is the front. And we want that piece there for that. I got a little bit off, like a little bit of a jog there, but um, I'm... I'm not going to worry about it <laughs> because my leather was being slippery and it's going to be fine. Oh, wait, I don't want to use those. It's my good ones. I'm just going to do this. Guys, this is where this is not going to make really a hill of beans difference in the way that this jacket fits. But especially when you're sewing with leather, you can't unpick things. And um, life's too short. <laughs> All right, so remember, you're not matching, you know, the cut edge here up. It's going to scoot. Uh, you want your sewing, your sewing line here to match at that raw edge, that raw neck edge. going back and forth on if I want the top stitching because I've got the cool stitching on this piece but then I feel like we just need it so I think we're just going to go ahead and top stitch that seam open I just think everything's going to lay nice and much flatter and I don't think it's going to take away too much from the design So we're gonna go with it. These are the things that keep me up at night. Do I want to do top stitching on the quilted pieces? These kind of things should not keep me up at night, but there you go. All right, and before we do the other side, I'm just gonna get my mallet back out. My mallet's wooden, obviously. You can go to the um, hardware store, though, and just get a rubber one. Okay, so now we'll do the other side. Okay, I really like that texture. That's going to look really cool, I think. Okay, and then we just want to do the same on the other side of the jacket and um, you know the other side and the other yoke and then we'll be done for today and um, I'll meet you back here tomorrow or next week and we will um, do our fronts and put in those um, zipper 
the zippers. Yeah, we're going to do that next week, I think. Uh, the pocket zippers. Actually, next week may just be the zippered pockets. And then the following week, we will um, put the rest of the front together and then put the jacket together. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. <laughs> okay, guys, let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.